Hi, for this video what I want to do is to show you how to use Excel to be able to figure out how many of your data points are within one, two, or three standard deviations of the mean. All of the other information that I already have up here, um, I do have videos on how to come up with all of these, so I have used Excel formulas in order to fill in all of these cells. That way if I change anything over here, so like maybe if I notice that I typed this in wrong and it was really supposed to be 5,600, um, when I hit enter, it automatically updates everything else. So it changes everything. Um, I'm gonna go back to Control-Z because I didn't really wanna do that. Control-Z always undoes whatever you last did if you accidentally make a mistake. So within one standard deviation, what that means, remember, is that if you have your model, it's gonna be centered at the mean, and within one standard deviation means that we're going to take the mean. So I'm gonna do equals the mean minus the standard deviation to get one standard deviation below the mean. And then I would do the same thing for the next time, but this time I want to do minus two times the standard deviation. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for equals the mean minus three times the standard deviation. And we know that we won't have any that are more than um, that are lower than negative 6,000, so it's impossible to get more than three standard deviations below the mean in this um, particular data set. Um, it is okay to have negatives down here, it just means that it's not possible. So it's not possible to be three standard deviations below the mean in this case. Okay, for the upper limit, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do equals the mean, and this time I'm going to add the standard deviation because the upper means it's the positive, so we're adding to get to the next one. And then I'm going to do equals the mean plus two times the standard deviation, and we just use the asterisk symbol for times. And then the last one we're going to do equals the mean plus three times the standard deviation. Okay, now to find the frequency, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a different frequency formula than I used up here. For this one, this gives you the cumulative frequency, and if you want to use this formula, you would have to take the frequency that fall by the end of this upper limit, and then you would have to subtract everything that's on the below this one. For the first one, it's fine, you can use that, but for the ones afterwards, this one gives you the cumulative frequency, so everything that falls by this point. So if you don't want to have to do subtraction, you can use another formula in Excel called count ifs. Um, count ifs is for multiple criteria. Um, you don't use this if you only have a single criteria. For this one, I have more than one criteria, so I'm going to, because I want it to be between these two values, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to select my data. And instead of highlighting the whole thing, I'm just going to hit Control, Shift, and the Down button. Control, Shift, and the Down button. And it automatically highlights that whole set, uh, that whole column. So if you have a lot of data, like if you have like a thousand rows, that's the quickest way of doing it instead of having to scroll down with your mouse. Again, that was Control, Shift, and Down. So control, shift, and down. And then I'm gonna put a comma behind this and it asks for my criteria. I want it to be greater than or equal to, and notice how I'm putting this in quotation marks. I have to put the greater than or equal to. It's telling me I'm looking for all values greater than or equal to. And then I'm gonna use the ampersand um, with the lower value. So I want all that are greater than or equal to this value, comma, I want to use the same cell again, so I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna again hit Control, Shift, and Down so that it automatically populates A1 through 25. And I'm gonna put in quotation marks again. Um, this time I want it to be less than or equal to um, the values that are in, so I have to use the ampersand. Um, if you just had a set number, like if you want it to be greater than or equal to five and less than or equal something else, you can actually put those numbers inside the quotation marks. But if you want to reference a cell, you have to use the ampersand and the cell that you're referencing. So my upper for this one is E13. And then I'm gonna hit parentheses and enter. Okay, um, that tells me I have a frequency of 21 that fall between that are greater than 1872 and less than eight, so 18,821. Okay, um, so for this, I'm just making sure I have all my formulas correct. 
I want to be able to drag this down here. Well, if I drag this down here, it's going to change my A1 and A25. So to keep those the same, remember you put the dollar sign in front of them. So I'm going to go back. Whoops. Control Z. That's hold on. Control Z. I don't know why it did that sometimes my mouse pad because I am working on a laptop um, I'll accidentally hit the trackpad I did not mean to do that um, so I'm gonna put a dollar sign in front of both the a I didn't get behind there the a and the 25 and instead of having to try to do this again I'm just gonna highlight this part right here and control C and then I'm gonna change this one to be the same thing Control V. So I just hit Control C to copy and Control V to paste. It's the quickest way of doing it rather than right clicking. And so I'm going to keep those the same. The D13 and the E13 I want to change. So now what I can do is I can just take and drag this down and it will automatically populate. So for this one, it tells us that we have 22 that fall within two standard deviations and all 25 of them fall within um, three standard deviations. So my percentage for this one should be 100%. Remember to calculate the percent, it's just the frequency divided by the sum of all the frequencies. Um, so for this column, what we're going to do, and I'm going to format this cell because I want it as a percent. I'm actually going to format it to be percentage. I had already done that, but to select it as percentage, um, we would put it here. So it's going to put the answer as a percent. So what I want to do is I want to take this value right here, this cell, and I want to divide it by the sum of all my frequencies, which I have right here. The sum of my frequencies, this formula for this one is just equal sum of these values here. And I want the H11 to stay the same for all of them because my sum of my frequencies does not change. Um, so I'm going to hit enter for that. So 84% of our data points fall within one standard deviation. And then if I drag this down, we have 88% of them fall within two standard deviations. And we have 100% of them fall within three standard deviations. So um, you can set this up. Like I said, um, for my students that are working on their project, you can highlight this entire page and then copy it for the next one and then just change your data set. Um, remember that when you go to the proportions, make sure that you pay attention to there being two decimal places instead of one decimal place. Um, so just really be careful about that. Um, if you have any questions, please make sure you reach out to me. Um, this is a different formula than I used up here. You could use the same formula that I used up here. It's just going to, it's just nice to know different options. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please reach out to me.